Alright, how's it going everyone? Zono right here coming at you with another episode of the Zono Podcast. Episode 2 I think, or episode 2 or 3, I'm not sure, but I hope you guys are doing well. This is going to be a podcast, so feel free to put this uh, video or this window on the side and just, uh, I guess, listen to what I have to say. I don't know if you guys can hear the, the cops outside or the firefighters, I'm sorry if there's any background noise. Uh, so, what a weekend of esports, guys. What a weekend of esports. EU LCS, NLCS finals, uh, one in Paris, one in Boston. Uh, amazing events, uh, especially for me, uh, it, it was an amazing experience, even though I watched it on Twitch. Uh, I saw all my old co- colleagues in Paris uh, doing the shout casting in France. Uh, one of my colleagues, uh, old colleagues called Zaboutine, did the, the English analysis desk uh, for the Riot Games stream. So it was really cool to see uh, him there, and it was very, very interesting. Uh, overall, very good event. I wish that EULCS was in a 3 0 match. I wish it was a little bit more disputed. But what can I say? G2 was very good, and Misfits uh, couldn't really do anything else. Uh, so today guys, in this episode, uh, I want to talk about something a little bit special and touch us to uh, and touch on some points that I've actually started to talk about on my recaps of the EULCS and it was to talk about PoE, Power of Evil, Oriana Build. So as you guys may have seen on Twitter or on this video that I was talking about, I wasn't a fan of PoE's Oriana Build. So if you don't know Oriana Build, uh, the build that he did, so he did. Dorn ring potions to start, then he would do like a second Dorn ring, then he would get Rod of Ages, then he would get Codex and turn the Codex into a Nasher Tooth with the Sorcerer's Boots. So a very DPS-like, unconventional build. And I really want to talk about this because I think it's super interesting to talk about because, well, if if you're a player of League of Legends and I feel like a lot of the times what we see, the data, the people that are trying to help, the people that are trying to do guides out there, they're usually trying to tell you how to f- like to follow a path, like follow some sort of like, uh, like oh, like you should build this, you sh- your runes should be like that, your mastery should be like that, do this, do this and that. Like all the guys you see on like, uh, what was Law King, I think that's the, the, the website. Uh, or what are the guys' website? Like, they will tell you, okay, you should build this, then you should build that, then you should get this, this is what Sneaky built uh, last time on stream, this is what you should do, this is how you should play things. And I think it's super interesting to talk about this, I think it's a very fascinating topic, and this is going to be the main topic of this podcast, is what really defines the meta? Because when you think about it, when League of Legends started, uh, today you go in a queue, you go in a queue, you say, I want to play mid, or I want to play top, and that's it, primary role, secondary role. But when I started to play League of Legends in, uh, at the end of Season 1, when I created my account, but when I really started playing, which is Season 2, uh, I mean, I was bronze in Season 1. I have the icon, but I really started to try hard the game Season 2. You There, there wasn't, like, any mid lane. Like, nobody told you, oh, like, you, we need a mage in the mid lane. This, like, Riot didn't, okay? People figured out the meta. People actually was like, okay, we need a mid laner in the mid lane because it's a player that needs to roam and that needs the more experience. So he needs to be in the middle of the map to be able to make difference on side lanes and he needs the most level. Uh, the, the So the most levels are because the route to Dominions is shorter and we need him to hit level 6 first and stuff like that. ADC needs to be with a support, so this, this support is champion that does heal and shield and stuff like that. He doesn't necessarily need a lot of experience, he can, so he can lane with someone else, but he needs to be protected and farm as much as possible so he can build uh, as fast as possible. And top lane is literally a little bit the same thing with mid lanes, except that he doesn't initially need to be in the middle of the map, and he can farm by himself, protecting himself. All that is something that was defined by players. And I feel like most of the players that join League of Legends don't know that, since you guys created your account maybe three, four, two, even one year ago. And it's very interesting because right now, as we saw PoE doing this in a very unconventional way, like, I don't... When was the last time you saw an attack speed Oriana? An AP attack speed Oriana? I, I don't. I don't remember the last time I saw that. And my first reaction it was that, oh, it's shit. Like, you shouldn't do that. When he played it, it wasn't good. I'm not going to support his case because I think that in the, his game against an all-in comp, you need a very hard AP, hard carry 
a burst mode Oriana that can put a shockwave onto an ADC and just one shot him. The DPS here wasn't a good idea. I don't think it was at least. If you want to argue, please feel free to put a comment down below. Uh, I actually wish we had an interview with Power of Evil. One of my biggest regrets, and I wish, like, because when you have something like that happening on League of Legends or Lowly Sports, like, you want to ask the guy, like, why did you do that? And I wish we had more information on that. So, your first initial reaction to this is, okay, what the hell is going on? Why is he doing this? Well, the point of here is that, and I think analysts told us on the analysis, is that when you have attack speed and AP on Ariana with the passive of the auto attacks, you technically have, over the course of a long team fight, like a very prolonged team fight, you have overall a better DPS and more damage to champion build. The thing is that, when you have an all-in comp in front of you, you don't have the pro this prolonged fight. Like, an all-in comp will try to one-shot someone, have a 4v5 situation, kite a little bit, and win the game like that. Uh, if they had a team fight oriented or, or like a team fight with like a lot of tanks and like carries in the back lane, a very traditional gameplay uh, composition, maybe the Oriana attack speed could have been well, but again, it is not the meta. And this is so important to know because in this case, it wasn't good, but in another case, maybe an Oriana attack speed AP would have been actually more valuable. Right now, I can't really think of anything that will make it valuable because I feel like uh, the all-in comp is really what it is about. But let's say you have like a Shogaf in front of you and they don't have a lot of things like they have, let's say like pokes or they have a lot of assassins and like they have a lot of like uh, HP. Maybe a shockwave isn't what is going to make the difference. Let's say there's an Oriana in front of you, the black shield and everything, you know, you're going to be like, okay, my shockwave isn't going to do a lot of damage. Uh, I'm always going to get black shielded or I'm always going to be exhausted. Let's say they have two exhaust. I'm not saying that's a good solution to have a, a, a attack speed Ariana, but there is a situation where having more DPS because you know that the team fights are going to last longer, that having a, uh, attack speed Ariana will be worth it. I'm not sure if I'm making myself clear there, but I just want what I'm trying to say is that Power Evil, maybe he should have done that here. Maybe it was a bad call from him, and maybe it's kind of ballsy, and I, won't, I don't want to say unrespectful to his teammates, but I guess I just said it. Uh, but it's kind of ballsy for him to bring that on finals. Like, finals, best of th best of five, bringing uh, AS Oriana is so ballsy, and I don't think it was worth it. Honestly, I don't think it was worth it, because he could have played a conventional way, and maybe done a, a good job. But again, we can, like, we... There's only so much blaming we can do on him. Like, obviously, I think game two was his fault, 100%. But we can't really just give him, like, the blame all the time about those games. Well, whatever happened, happened, right? But what I'm trying to tell you is, I want to go back to an old point that I made in this podcast, is that the meta is defined by players. Always remember that. League of Legends, right games, they make patches, they make stuff happening just because they want to rotate uh, fashion, they want to do be, they, they want to rotate the meta in some sort. But the meta is created by players. And someone said that one day, and I totally forgot about what it was, but I, I totally forgot who it was. But he said, you know what? Uh, the meta is only going to change once low elo players are going to do something crazy that actually works. And you got to think about this in any way, like, you know, in industries like, uh, let's say fashion, for example. Um, People that try, like, I mean, there's not, like, a meta in fashion and stuff, like, it's very different, but when people try, like, let's say, when you see a, a rapper, like, who who is very, like, famous and wild in style, you see, for example, Travis Scott. For example, Travis Scott is, has a very wild fashion of style. Like, he has very, like, very unique clothes, very unique design, and he seems crazy at a time, but the more you see it, the more it makes sense, and people start copying it, and it starts being fashion like uh like la mode in french and in legal fashion is that you have small elo players that just try sh like shitty stuff right that don't make sense we see a lot of youtubers trying crazy stuff that are obviously in a troll oriented way but sometimes you just find this like pearl that actually defines the meta right now we have like low elo players like the entire ecosystem of legal fashion is really predefined and you have so much going on and so much in the past has been going on and we kind of see a routine a rotation between like an assassin meta a tanky meta a mage meta an adc meta and 
it's it's always about the same thing to a few details and we don't see always the same champion but it's still in interesting to think that it's players like power of evil that actually are doing good to the game because it's because of players like poe that we don't see always the same thing in league of legends and it's because of players like him that motivates people like me or like you to actually have other creative ideas during the game because right now league of legends has been really the same for a lot of time when you think about it the whole mid adc support bot top bot lane blah 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 is some is the first thing that was predefined by players and that really never ever changed it's very anchored to the moba image and it's probably never going to change but you see how for example uh we saw like Moscow 5, well, that was like season 1 or 2, I don't know if most of you guys will remember that, but they were the first people to do double jungle, double jungle guys, like I'm, t I'm talking double, like two people in the jungle, jungling together and pushing super hard, this my friends was like a huge shock for the entire like entertainment of esports, like because it just breaks the routine and that's really what I want to tell you guys is that if you think that something is worth it, if you think that whatever craziest thing is, uh, I don't know, I don't know what, I mean, I'm not going to say like AP Gary and stuff like that because obviously it doesn't make sense. But if you can think of something that is crazy, but it makes sense of your mind, in your mind, and you're like, okay, I'm actually going to try it out. I would be happy to talk to you about it and maybe like we can do a podcast together or you can just leave a comment down below and we can just start a conversation. But it is so interesting to see like, uh, how you can define like the meta by yourself and just shake things up because right now players are just addicted to this routine of er how everything goes and they're like oh we do laning phase then we farm then we do a gang here a gang here a gang here then we get dragon then we group then we team fight then we get baron then we end the game we team fight we team fight we get baron turret turret gold 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 like you see how this thing is always repeating itself no matter what's going to happen with any patch and and this is something really crucial. It's really the fact that POE started with this arena here make me sparkle like the, the idea in my mind. And I really started to entertain the idea since this weekend about how how is the meta determined? Like who who did this? Why is the game like that? Today you can pick a role before you like you play a game. Uh, before you couldn't do that before you had to say okay guys I'm playing mid lane, I want to play this, and they would just let you or they would, or like the first pick had the priority. But it's very interesting to see how the game is going to move. And it's also, you know, like we saw what was going to happen with the preseason. I don't know if you guys saw the video. Maybe I'll make a video about this and tell you a little bit about what I think. Let me know, by the way, in the comment down below if you want me to do this. But it's super interesting to see how Riot Games is trying to change this. And it's, it's what breaks the routine that would redefine the game and that would make the game more and more exciting. And I think this is what we were lacking for I want to say two to three years. I think that League of Legends had been very like, for me, at least for me, I mean, I want to say two years, two years. For two years, League of Legends has been like in the routine. We hadn't had like a very interesting change. We had big changes like the plants and all that stuff were really interesting. The new drakes were really interesting, but it's still the same core of ideas. And you know, guys, I really want, I really wish to see amazing ideas, like break, breaking, like ideas that break the routine, nothing like things that come out of the blue and that will shake things up. Most of the people won't like it, and this is really to be expected, because people don't like change, and I'm the first one that doesn't like change, especially when you're like, you're liking something, you don't want it to change. I personally wouldn't mind changing, because right now I'm kind of losing interest for League of Legends as a game, not as an esports though, but... I just feel like something needs to happen that will like shake things up. And if you guys are a player that has creative ideas, don't ever be like, oh, like my friends don't want to play this. My friends don't want me to play that because it sounds dumb. When Masco 5, if you guys don't know about this team, Masco 5 today is Gambit, Gambit Esports, a Russian team. Um, they were geniuses. Like they were so smart at the game. They beat Koreans. They beat the best players in the world. Uh, they never won a major championship, they never won like words or anything, but they were so good because 
they were always playing something that was not expected by anyone. Uh, I remember when they, they used to play Urgot Top or Urgot ADC. They were the first one to play Urgot. And it was like, n nobody knew how to play Urgot. Nobody knew what to build on him. People, Everyone thought it was a shit champion and that nobody should play it. And that if you play, you were a troll and that you should get reported. And one day, they brought it to LCS. They made everyone shut up. And the next day in solo queue, all you could see is Urgot, 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 Urgot. So, right now, what I'm trying to say is that League of Fashion is defined in a way. Like, you walked into this game, we told you there was some guy top, there was some guy mid, two guy uh, bot, and one guy wandering around the jungle. That the game is going in a way where you have to find minions, then you have to team fight, then you have to get turrets, and eventually destroy the Nexus. This core blueprint isn't probably going to change, but feel free to tweak it as you see fit. And I encourage everyone to maybe, like, like take notes of, like, crazy ideas that you may have. PoE showing Arena with attack speed is one of those crazy ideas that people might not like at first, but this could become the meta tomorrow, where where maybe if maybe tomorrow if the meta changes and we have way longer team fights and stuff like this, and Oriana passive gets up, who who knows? Maybe there's gonna be a new attack speed, AP damage is gonna uh, item that is gonna come out. So always have this in mind. Don't judge players that take risks like this because it is also to be admired. I don't think it was a wise idea from him to do this, to pull this off in finals. Maybe he could have done this in regular season or just in solo queue while he streams. But still, I really respect uh, his decision. I really respect his courage to do this, uh, especially in an event like this. And I encourage you to guys do the same. Don't play what people tell you to play. Don't play because don't play this because Night Blue told you to play this, or, or you saw like uh, Bjergsen playing that that way. Uh, a lot of those people are what we call meta slave, and that and pro gamers are usually meta slave because the game is done like that, and they just want to optimize everything. They want to be the best at everything, and taking the time to research a new meta is a time away from actually practicing the current meta. So if you guys are bronze, if you guys are silver, and you want to start having fun with League of Legends, if you don't, if you're not having fun. Start noting ideas, be like, oh, actually, I think this could work with that. Oh, maybe this item is very not used. Like, you see items like Wit's End, Nasher Tooth, uh, Ginzu. Those are items we don't see a lot. Like, just look into items, look at the shop, and see what items are built a lot. And try to figure out something. I'm sure, I'm sure there's something to figure it out, something that could actually work and surprise the entire League of Legends community. Uh, I'm going to do the same research as myself. If I come up with something, I'll probably do a video about it. I will also do a video about Orana attack speed and see what's up with that and if it can work in a solo queue game. And yeah, thank you so much for listening for this podcast, guys. If you have any suggestions, feedbacks, I would love to hear it. Don't forget to follow me at Zonobra on Twitter and uh, subscribe and like this video. Uh, it really, really helps. Thank you so much for being here, guys. I hope you like this podcast. I'll see you for the next one. It's been Zonobra, guys. Cheers.